What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brooke. Welcome back to another Crafted Workshop video. So in today's video, instead of just having one project, I've actually got three projects. The sponsor of this week's video, True Value Hardware, challenged myself and Chris Salamone from Four Eyes Furniture to build some pieces to kind of spruce up our man caves. And these are the three projects I came up with. I've got this dartboard cabinet, got this whiskey bottle lamp, and I've got a patio cooler stand for a Yeti. So all three of these would look great in any man cave and were built with super basic tools, all of which I purchased at True Value Hardware. So before we actually get started with the project, let's rewind a couple weeks to the little shopping spree I went on at the True Value Hardware near my parents' house in Duluth, Georgia. I went on this shopping spree while I was in Atlanta for Christmas and went to the True Value store closest to my parents' house. My dad and I spent a few hours shopping around and picking out tools for my projects. When I was deciding which tools to purchase, I basically used the tools I recommended in my five woodworking tools for beginners video, which included a drill and impact driver set, a jigsaw, circular saw, random orbit sander, and router. In addition to those tools, I picked up some accessories for the tools, including sandpaper, drill and driver bits, and router bits. I also got some basic hand tools, including a screwdriver, low angle block plane, speed square, tape measure, four foot level, and some clamps. My goal was to literally only use tools I purchased on this trip, so I really tried to make sure and cover all my bases. With the tool shopping done, I started getting materials and supplies for the projects. This included a Yeti cooler for the patio cooler stand project, a lamp kit for the whiskey bottle lamp project, and then various screws, glue, and finishing supplies for both the patio cooler and dartboard cabinet projects. After checking it out, I loaded up my dad's car and then headed home to my shop a few days later. Back in my shop, the first project I started working on was the patio cooler stand. You've probably seen these before, they're really just a nicer way to have a cooler out at a party and help to elevate the cooler to make it more comfortable to grab a beverage from within. I started by breaking down my oak 1x8s with my circular saw and speed square. These pieces will make up the sides of the cooler stand. When making cuts like this with the circular saw, I like to clamp the piece to my table to keep it steady. It's also important to make sure you pay attention to which side of the line you're cutting on. Also, I realized that I'm technically using the saw on the wrong side of the blade, but I'm a lefty and this is way more comfortable for me. I'll have all the dimensions for this project on my website in the article that goes along with this video if you're interested. And this stand was designed to fit the Yeti Tundra 45 cooler, but could easily be scaled to fit other coolers. After getting the four side pieces cut to length, I clamped them together and then checked for square. To assemble the sides, I used inch and a quarter screws, and since I'm gonna be plugging these holes with dowels, I went ahead and marked the location just to make the plugged holes look as clean as possible. I drilled the holes using a countersink bit, making sure to go to full depth, and then added the screws. I added two screws per corner and just repeated the steps until all four corners were done. After assembling the sides, I did a quick test fit just to make sure my measurements were correct and the cooler fit perfectly. After the test fit, I removed one side at a time, added glue, and then screwed the sides back together. I like to do this when building things this way as it's a lot less messy and easier to fix any errors without the pieces covered in glue. After adding the glue, I went back and added one more screw per corner. To flush up the edges of the boards, I used my low angle block plane and took a few passes until they were perfectly flush. This is especially important on the bottom of the sides since I'll be using a router with a rabbiting bit in the next step. Speaking of which, next I installed a half inch rabbiting bit in my trim router and set the depth to about half of the final depth for the first pass. Routers make a huge mess and rabbiting is one of the messiest operations you can do on a router. Dust gets everywhere and it's really important to wear some kind of respirator just to protect yourself from the ridiculous amount of dust. After the first pass, I adjusted the bit to my final depth of 3 quarters of an inch and then made the final pass. Once the rabbit was cut, I measured the size for the bottom panel and then marked the measurement on my 3 quarter inch plywood project panel. I clamped down my 4 foot level to serve as a straight edge, making sure it was square and to account for the plate of the circular saw. If you're going to be doing a lot of ripping with a circular saw, I definitely recommend making a straight line jig, which I have a video on. After ripping the plywood to width, I marked the length and then cross cut the panel to final length. Before installing the bottom panel, I needed to round the corners on the panel to fit the rounded corners created by the rabbiting bit. I kind of forgot that I had a jigsaw to work with on this first corner, but made sure to nip off the bulk of the waist with the jigsaw on the other corners. The last step before installing the bottom panel was to sand the inside faces of the sides since they were a lot easier to get to without the bottom panel in the way. I sanded them up to 180 grit with my random orbit sander. Finally, it was time to install the bottom panel. 
I added glue to the rabbit and then put in the panel and then added some inch and a quarter screws to hold the panel in place. I made sure to pre-drill and countersink the holes so that the sides of the stand didn't split. Next, I plugged the screw holes on the sides of the stand. I didn't have the correct size dowels on hand to fit the size of hole the countersink bit created, so I needed to drill out the holes to 3 eighths of an inch. Once that was done, I added some glue to each hole, pounded in a dowel, and then trimmed the dowel flush with my flush trim saw. Before getting prepped for finish, I went ahead and installed the hairpin legs I used for this project. First I marked the offset using my speed square, and then installed the legs using the included screws. And here's an idea what the stand will look like when it's finished. Next I removed the legs and started getting the piece prepped for finishing. First I cleaned up the top edges using my block plane, and I've got to say I was really impressed with this little plane. I also chamfered all the edges of the stand with the block plane and then sanded the whole thing up to 180 grit. Since the patio cooler stand and dartboard cabinet are both getting the same finish, I decided to wait and just finish them both at the same time, so next I got to work on the dartboard cabinet. The cabinet itself is built in the exact same way as the cooler stand with four sides screwed and glued together and a back panel rabbited in place, so I'm going to speed through that part with a nice slider montage. While I'm working on the cabinet, let's talk about the sponsor of this week's video, True Value Hardware. As you saw earlier, all the tools I used in this build were purchased at the Howard Brothers True Value Hardware store in Duluth, Georgia. True Value stores are all locally owned and operated, and these stores take pride in helping their neighbors complete their projects. There are over 4,000 True Value stores in 58 countries, so make sure to visit truevalue.com or click the link in the video description below to find a True Value Hardware near you. Also, True Value is giving away a $1,000 gift card to one of their lucky Facebook followers, so make sure to follow the link in the video description to get entered. Thanks to True Value for supporting my channel and helping me make over my man cave. After getting the cabinet built, I flushed up the front edges again using the block plane, and then installed the hinges for the doors onto the cabinet. I spaced the hinges 3 inches from the top and bottom edges of the cabinet. For the doors, I used one of these 1x12 panels that are glued up from multiple pieces, and this one was 6 feet in length. Since I wanted the doors to overhang the bottom edge of the cabinet so that they could be opened without door pulls, I cut them to 25 and a half inches long using my circular saw. As I said, the doors will be opened by pulling on the bottom edge of the doors, so I added a heavy chamfer to that bottom inside edge to make it more comfortable to pull. Next, I installed the hinge onto the door and then hung the door onto the cabinet. The last pieces of hardware to install on the dartboard cabinet were a pair of magnetic catches which hold the doors closed. I installed one on the bottom and top of the cabinet. And rather than use the metal plate that was included with the magnetic catch, I used a screw on each door, which works great and is a lot less noticeable. Before applying the finish, I sanded everything up to 180 grit using my random orbit sander. For the finish, I decided to first stain the dartboard cabinet and patio cooler stand black since that fit the look of my man cave better. I used regular old speedball ink, which I've used before, and it works great. I just wiped on a coat with a shop towel and let it dry for a few hours. To seal the ink, I used polycrylic, a water-based polyurethane, but if I had to do this again, I would have used a spray finish instead, since a lot of the ink lifted onto my foam brush when brushing on the finish. This didn't seem to really affect the look of the stain, but I think spraying would help to seal the ink better. After the finish dried, I added some cork to the inside back of the cabinet to give something for the darts to hit. This cork was a total pain to work with and wanted to crumble and crack when I tried to cut it. I'll probably either replace it or go back with some quarter round molding to hide the jagged edges. To hang the cabinet on the wall, I used this metal French cleat hardware which is rated for 200 pounds and worked great. I attached one half of it to the back of the cabinet and then moved inside and attached the other half to the wall, making sure at least two of the screws went into the studs. The height a dartboard is supposed to be mounted is pretty specific, with the center of the bullseye set at 5 feet 8 inches from the ground, so make sure to take this into account when mounting your dartboard cabinet. To hang the cabinet on the wall, I just lowered the cabinet onto the cleat, making sure the pieces nested together correctly. If you didn't want to buy French cleat hardware, you could also make some yourself by ripping a board in half at a 45 degree angle, Finally, I mounted the dartboard to the center of the cabinet and then tested it out. After throwing a few darts, I decided the cabinet was missing some holders for the darts, so I took a few pieces of the scraps from the patio cooler stand and drilled some holes into them to hold the darts. 
Next, I mounted them to one of the doors of the cabinets. With that, the dartboard cabinet was done. After the finish dried on the patio cooler stand, I reattached the hairpin legs and then brought it and the Yeti cooler into the man cave. The final touch for the stand was to add this cool little Coca-Cola bottle opener I picked up while I was at True Value, and you definitely need to have a bottle opener near the cooler, and having one mounted right to the stand is super convenient. With both of the woodworking projects finished, it was time to move on to the last project for this video, the whiskey bottle lamp. This was a really simple one. The only tools you'll need for this project are a glass cutting drill bit, a drill, and a screwdriver. And to drill a hole in the glass, you need to make sure to use a glass specific drill bit and to keep the bit lubricated with water. And I just used a spray bottle for this. I kept a steady speed and pressure and just slowly worked my way through the glass until I was all the way through. With the test bottle a success, I moved on to my real bottle, this beautiful IW Harper decanter bottle. Again, the process was the same, I just took it slow and ended up with a cleanly drilled hole. Off camera, I rinsed out the bottle to get rid of any glass dust and then made sure to let the bottle dry completely. Electricity and water do not mix well. Next, I drilled a hole through the cork through which the lamp nipple will be threaded. The lamp nipple was a really snug fit, so I chucked it into the drill and used it to thread the nipple through the cork. I then threaded on the neck, one of the pieces that came with the lamp kit, and then the lock nut, which keeps the lamp nipple in place. After putting together the cork assembly, I threaded the cord through the hole in the back of the bottle and tied a knot in the cord to make sure it couldn't be pulled loose. Next, I threaded the cord up through the nipple and through the cork, screwed the socket cap onto the lamp nipple, and then used the set screw to lock it into place. Next, I tied an underwriter's knot in the cord, which is another strain relief measure. And I apologize for this being slightly out of frame here, but honestly, wiring the lamp is really simple, and I'm not comfortable giving this advice anyway since I'm not an electrician. After wiring the lamp, I pressed the socket shell onto the socket cap, installed the shade and a bulb, and it was ready to try out. Once I had verified that my wiring was correct, I removed the lamp assembly and filled the bottle with these flat glass marbles, sometimes also called vase fillers. These both look great in the bottle and also add a little more weight to keep the lamp from tipping as easily. Once the bottle was full, I reinstalled the lamp assembly and the lamp was done. All right, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. I'm really happy with the way these came out. I know you guys wanted some more limited tool builds based on the poll I sent out a few weeks ago. So hopefully this gives you some good ideas of projects you can build with super, super basic tools. If you want some more ideas, definitely go check out the video on Chris's channel. He built an awesome media console, again, using really basic power tools. He did add a little job site table saw to the list, but still some really basic accessible tools that will allow you guys to build almost anything on a budget. So again, I'll have a build article to go along with this video that'll have all the dimensions for both of the woodworking projects. Also, in case you missed last week's video, I built six awesome woodworking mallets. I'm giving five of them away. That giveaway is still running for another week from the day this is published. So I'll have a link to enter that below in case you're interested. And last, I got these new Crafted Workshop t-shirts available in case you're interested in supporting me and repping your Crafted Workshop love in style. It's got a little hashtag Johnny Squat on the arm. Super soft, super comfortable. And I'll have a link to those as well in the video description. All right, thanks so much for watching everybody. And until next week, happy building.